Hi! I can't stand straight up because my feathers keep getting caught in the fan. Do you like my new thigh armor? My mud flaps. I thought it was a kilt when I ordered it, but this, this is just as good. Okay. Sub fam! It's Richie from Social Make Pop Tart here. And uh, today we're talking about. What are we talking about? Uh, Shane Dawson is still alive, miraculously. Now, how do I know this? Well, because he posted a video for the first time in a year and a half, almost two years at this point. He's been gone. He's been gone a very long time. He got he got canceled. I don't know if you've been following the drama. I sure didn't. But to kind of skim over it, at least my knowledge of it, Shane got got the shortest straw when it comes to cancel culture um, because it's not really what he did currently it's it's what he did almost a decade ago and he did a lot of stuff his his old content was very racy it honestly kind of reminds me of Onision content back in the day they they were very similar <laughs> at least the, the style in which they shot it and and the uh, the comedy type which was very um I'm hesitant to say controversial. It was very, it's just lowbrow slapstick humor, a lot of just kind of offensive jokes just to get laughs, and stuff that people really seemed to resonate with and enjoy at the time, uh, back in 2011 or so. But that content has has aged like just, just the finest milk there is. It, uh, it, it got him canceled really hard and really spectacularly to the point where he has been in hiding for the last year and a half, and uh, that that brings us that brings us to now. And I just like to say, really quick, is this boring, Scorn? You having a, you having a good time? Okay. I would just like to say that I don't like making drama-related videos or talking about people that I don't know or just commentating on drama. This is not a T channel, but I did do Shane's podcast a few years ago. It's not scary in person. Mm -hmm. In videos. I was so scared because I saw your thumbnail, right? This is how right. I found you, like two, three years, maybe. Sure. I saw a thumbnail and it was you and it, there was a picture of me next to it and it was like reacting to Shane something. And I was terrified because I'm like, oh my God, he's going to like rip me apart. He's scary. He's like a demon. He's going <laughs> to... I feel so bad that like you... Like, it, cause but the, you were the... nice. And I had a solid 20, 30 minute talk with him off camera after the podcast was done. So I, I feel a certain type of connection to all of this. I, I, I would never say that I'm friends with them or that I'm close with them or any of that, but I do feel like I want to comment on this, so that's why I'm making this video. It's essentially a vlog of, of him and Ryland and, and their cameraman, I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot his name, and him just being very open and candid and saying a lot of things, especially in the first half of the video, that I deeply resonate with, and I'd like to talk about it, uh, step by step. So sorry if this comes off a little jumbled, but let's just go through it. I have I have so many opinions on this, and I I resonate with it heavily because cancel culture and blah blah blah. Yeah. We make mistakes. Uh huh. Yes, we do. <laughs> I'll get to that. We forgive quickly. How about you get to that? <laughs> okay. okay no, you you can hate me. If you hate me, honestly, I feel better that way because it's like lowering the bar. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Because I finally don't really care anymore what other people think about me, except for myself. But I don't really like me either, so <laughs> we're in a weird place. I really like his comment about lowering the bar. I know he's kidding in this, but he's kind of not. He has that delivery. And I think the healthiest way to re-enter the internet after you've been horrendously canceled is to just assume that everyone hates you. Expect it. Expect the worst, so then when people are accepting of you, or you do realize you still have an audience, it's a pleasant surprise. And you'll never be nearly as disappointed as all the people that are waiting to crucify Shane for coming back. Currently I'm in a place where I really want to get creative again, I really want to make stuff again. I am tired of just sitting around and waiting for some crazy idea to hit me. That was too hard. It kind of seems like every artist goes through this at some point in their career. And yes, Shane Dawson is absolutely an artist. Especially if you've been successful and you have the luxury to just sit 
in your giant, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to call this a mansion, your, your nice house and just wait for inspiration to hit you. But as I've said in many other videos, creativity is like a muscle. You have to exercise it, otherwise it shrinks and eventually goes away and uh, you become gray. I'm in a place now where I, it's been a very, oh my God, the sun's coming out. I wish I cared about that. I'm in a place, you know people who care about that, it's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Dawson's delivery and how he talks and how he like tells self-deprecating jokes is so similar to Louis C.K. This is my wife telling a story. She's like, guess what happened to my mom today? I was you remember I told you my mom how she when she was in college, not when she went to Michigan, when she transferred. Remember because that guy got weird and she had to leave because he was not the Iranian guy. That was a different story. That guy, I actually I think he was Persian. I, I heard that Persia actually split. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't do that. Here's me telling a story. I bought a tomato and I ate it and it was good. <laughs> That's a story anyone can follow. It's about a tomato the whole time. Personally, I would take that as a massive compliment. Uh, Louis C.K. has his own slew of, of uh, problematic issues and he got canceled, but he is a brilliant comedian. I, I highly recommend you check his, his stand-up out. And his humor, much like Louis C.K., is dark. It, it, a lot of people, I feel like, don't see that just because it's like Shane Dawson. And if you think of Shane Dawson, you think of like the OG kind of not, I mean, not squeaky clean YouTuber, but you know what I mean? A pretty ad friendly, rel relatively young audience. But if you just watch how he delivers his little teeny comedic moments, it's so self-deprecating. It's self-aware. It's very cynical and it's very observational. I'm surprised he didn't get canceled harder sooner. Even in his older, newer content, it, within the last five years, I would say, you can still see his humor is dark. And a lot of people don't know how to deal with that because at the end of it, it's all jokes. All the stuff he got canceled for, he was on camera saying. It's not like he got caught secretly being videotaped and he said some really messed up stuff. All of this stuff he was trying to do for laughs and clearly, he didn't think of the repercussions, especially down the road, as none of us do when we're being uh, controversial, I would know. But in this moment, if you compare Louis C.K. to Shane Dawson, a lot of this starts to make more sense. It's weird, because if I talk about it how I really feel, people are going to say, oh, you're trying to get sympathy or whatever, so I, I like don't want to talk about it. I feel like people are just gonna hate me no matter what, and I kind of just have to accept it. And then there's gonna be people who appreciate what I do, and then there's gonna be people who are gonna say I died, and then people are gonna believe it. And then, um, I'm not dead. What if I was? Sorry. That's an idea. Most people haven't been hard canceled by the internet before. And a lot of people don't talk about when you are being canceled, uh, regardless of if you're guilty or you deserve it or you don't or whatever, there's no good or easy way out. Whatever you do, people are going to hate you. If you apologize, you're sincere, people are going to think you're playing the victim. If you don't apologize at all, it means you're guilty and the worst person ever. It's a lose-lose, lose-lose-lose, lose-lose-lose, times infinity situation. And when you're going through that, you just kind of have to accept that everyone's going to hate you for a while. And if you disappear, people are going to make rumors that are outlandish and silly and some are funny, but some are really damaging and you just kind of have to accept it and understand that there's nothing you can do. I'm very, very, very disconnected from the person that I was in my early 20s to a point where when I see that person, it makes me feel really sad and sick to my stomach. This is like the age old core argument against cancel culture in that people change. People are malleable. Somebody could be an incredibly shitty person and then in five to 10 years, they could be a totally different person. And that's real. And I feel like a lot of what cancel culture tells people is that you are your mistakes. You are your worst moment. And you will never recover from that. You will be that forever and shame on you. And I personally think that's a really shitty way to look at life. That, that, is, a, that is a very binary way to look at it. Life has nuance, life has color, and it's it's just, it's not as simple as that, although it's very easy to look at it that way. But people grow up and they mature 
and I am sure as hell projecting right now, so you don't you don't even need to say it, all right? I, I know I am, I, I relate to this heavily. Because I felt like I, I had made a lot of growth before I got canceled. The last five or six years, in and out of therapy, dealing with stuff, I feel like I grew as a person. I feel like I learned a lot. I would never say or do any of those jokes, any of those things ever that I did back then. So it was a weird thing where like, I felt like I got to a place where I was proud of what I was making on YouTube, proud of my personal life, proud of who I was becoming. Like I felt like I was growing up and I was excited about the next chapter. And then it felt like everything went spiraled down and then I got canceled. The creator could spend years in therapy, reconnecting with family, reconnecting with their roots and making a genuine effort to change and to be better. And the internet doesn't see that because it's not being broadcast, edited, and packaged in neat little YouTube videos. So all anyone ever sees is your worst moment and then you disappear for a couple years. And to them, your whole existence has been frozen in time. They don't get to see your growth. They don't get to see your meaningful change. So when you come back, they just assume that you're still that guy. And that's very difficult to grapple with. It also made me realize that I can't focus on what other people think of me. I can't control the way that people feel about me. I can't control how people react when I'm getting canceled. People in my life, like I can't control if they're scared for their own career, for their own thing. And you know, I was very like, it was really hard, but I learned a lot. I've been seeing this video get dragged a fair amount on Twitter and other social medias. People were expecting this grand return from Shane Dawson and he's coming back with this kind of rambly, informal vlog type video. But I think he's being very eloquent here. The only way that you can survive as a content creator and not lose your fucking marbles is you can't obsess over what other people think of you. Obviously, reputation is important. Like we're we're tribal cre humans are tribal creatures. But if you obsess over that, especially at the level of fame that Shane Dawson is at or any kind of fame, it will rip you apart. There will always be people that will hate you and you just have to accept that, especially if you're doing anything controversial. But what I will say is I'm so grateful to have the chance to do more things in my life and I'm so excited. So that was a lot. And that brings this video to about the halfway point. If you want to watch the rest of it, the link is in the description. But I really like that sentiment in that you kind of have to allow yourself to be creative and to make content. And unless they're literally throwing your ass in jail, nothing is stopping you from doing what you love and being passionate about art projects or about whatever, just making media, making content. Uh, in Shane's case, conspiracy horror videos, it's fine. Cancel culture and the hate mob have as much power over you as you let them. Just because he gets a mountain of hate comments and is trending on Twitter for the things he did 10 to 15 years ago, which didn't really, like really didn't hurt anyone. Let's be real here. My favorite was the clip circulating around where he said on a podcast that he wanted to have sex with his cat. And I have seen so many people taking that so seriously. And that tells me all that I need to know. Cause firstly, <laughs> how? And secondly, it, it just seems like a parody of itself and people get so invested in this stuff and it's so silly. And honestly, Shane Dawson didn't get 20 million subscribers for nothing. He makes really good videos. I, I don't love all of them, but the, I'm not the demographic, but his docu-series were fantastic. His whole conspiracy makeup line reveal with Jeffree Star was a masterclass in building hype and advertising. And even his skits before that were, were funny. So I know it's kind of a hot take, but you've made it this far in the video. I hope Shane Dawson succeeds. I hope he continues making good content that make people happy. And if a select group of people on Twitter don't like that he still exists, and is making content that he enjoys and is trying to live his best life? Oh well, fuck him. And that's about all I have to say. Speaking of sponsorships, oh boy. You're so cute, never change. Oh my God, never die. Don't die. I wanna die before you, so I don't have to deal with you leaving. Can we do that? And that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a, a brand new t-shirt coming out next week, putting up pre-orders in my merch store. <laughs> 
Uh, I haven't released new merch in I think it's been over three years, so that's exciting. I am trying to be more active on my Patreon. Everyone's very supportive over there. And have a wonderful evening. Stay sad, but not too sad. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. You can take